Welcome back to Fast Market, everyone. Kevin Hinks and Joe Mazzola back here for our cash tag segment. Now let's bring in the co-founder of Likefolio.com, Mr. Andy Swan to the show. Andy's got a presentation that we've been calling for all week, and that is AI and semiconductors. Andy, this is the topic on everyone's mind. It's certainly the topic that people are looking at with this market. It's driving a lot of the numbers that this market is putting up. Andy, what do you see from a data perspective, from like Folio's perspective on AI and semiconductors in general, frankly? Yeah, it's it's the topic of the day and, it, and, it, and it's only growing as the topic of the day. You know, you, it's one of those things where you kind of <clears throat> sometimes feel like you may be heading into a little bit of a hype cycle, but at the, on the same token, you know, this consumes more and more of the conversation online each and every day. When we look at um, overall mentions of artificial intelligence in general, so AI, um, you know, it looks like one of those hockey stick graphs that a startup might have in its pitch deck of how their future might look. Um, you know, kind of just that hockey stick with the vast, uh, massive growth at the tail of it. That's what's happening right now. In AI, it's absolutely captured the attention of everyone, both on Main Street and Wall Street. Uh, you can see it on Wall Street, you know, NVIDIA up 227%. Uh, this year, I think AMD is up over 75% this year, and you've got poor little Intel with only a 36% gain on the year. Normally, that would be an unbelievably great year, but in the context of uh, what's going on in the chip making space in AI, uh, Intel really a big laggard. And so anytime that happens and you get such dispersion between, uh, you know, two, three companies in a, uh, in a market like we're seeing now, um, you know, I like to take a close look at what would happen if things reverted back towards the mean. And, you know, with Intel up over 200%, I'm sorry, Intel up only 36%, NVIDIA up over 200%. What does that look like if things start to shift? And at like Folio, we are starting to see a little bit of a shift. I'm not going to call this, you know, a massive uh, sea change, but uh, from where we were three months ago, it is significant. We have seen um, Intel now over the last 90 days actually grow in terms of the number of conversations that are happening about Intel's chips and its processors, while on the NVIDIA side, we've actually seen a cooling off. And, um, you know, a lot of times this can be the start of something uh, of a sea change. And, and I, I think if it is, there's an enormous opportunity for investors simply because of how much Wall Street has put its, all of its eggs in the NVIDIA basket and seems to have left Intel behind. So what we're seeing right now is, you know, consumers, uh, corporate buyers, the conversations are getting more positive about Intel. They're just cooling off a little bit about NVIDIA. And when you look at the dispersion between the two stocks, it could result in a pretty good opportunity moving forward. All right, Andy, let me, uh, let me throw this one out here. Sorry. So May 30th, right, NVIDIA announces their new supercomputer that generated all the buzz, their software and services for generative AI. Um, you know, creates content, writes articles, you know, can do some simple coding. I mean, yeah. did that pull all of that energy, right, uh, back to, to May 30th? And now that now that here we are two months later, a lot of that energy is just kind of faded away. I mean, wh how do you sh how do you how do you uh, make sense of that dispersion between the purchase intent and maybe, the, you know, the AI uh, uh, content that, you know, that, that seems to be permeating throughout the market? Yeah, I think you nailed it. I think that announcement was huge. I also think that there's also just a little bit of, you know, of sobriety entering the market where you say, okay, yes, NVIDIA has the best product for this environment. Uh, but Intel, AMD, these are not, you know, these are not really that bad of laggards. They, these are really, really high quality companies that can catch up very, very quickly. And so I think that it's a combination of, you know, coming off of a very, very hot cycle for NVIDIA where they announced the perfect product at the perfect time, uh, but also just a, a realization both on Wall Street and consumers around Main Street, you know, if you can't get that NVIDIA chip or if, you, if it's too expensive, then Intel and AMD have very viable options for 90 to 95% of use cases, even inside of the artificial intelligence sector. 
You know, Andy, it's interesting. When I look at your purchase intent versus sentiment, maybe we should have had this discussion yesterday because you have data on Intel that is playing out today in the market, right? You have Intel at a much, you know, top right uh, area on your graph that we all know if you watch the show regularly, that's where you want to be on this chart. And Intel's up 6%, NVIDIA's up 2% today. So uh, is your data showing that there's a little bit of recovery? You know, I always say, if you have 85% of the market like NVIDIA does, you're not going to 95%. There's a much right. better bet that you're going to 60 or 50% than 95, Andy. Yeah, that's what, you know, I think overall that's what we're trying to bring to the show today. And I think the, that what we're seeing out of Intel today kind of confirms some of that early movement theory. And that, you know, if you're looking at this sector, I just challenge investors to not just pile on to the one hot name out of three or four uh, that has been performing the best. There's always that chance of a reversion to the mean, especially when you're talking about extremely competent, proven companies in a very fast growing sector. Because like we've seen over the course of, uh, you know, the, the digital revolution, internet revolution, sure. there's room for a lot of players to win. And it's not always the first out of the gate with the biggest, most explosive gains that, that ends up as the ultimate winner. But, um, you know, I, I take a strong look at Intel here. I think it's underperformed significantly compared to peers and it could uh, be the biggest winner of the three over the next three, six, even 12 months. Yeah, and the cautionary tale here is stocks get way overdone on the upside. Yeah. Your, yeah. your example, mm -hmm. look at streaming, right? Netflix yeah. is the clear winner in streaming, and the stock is still hundreds of dollars off its all-time high when streaming was so popular. Disney traded $203. There's a lot of evidence that at some point, you got to let these run and let them come back to earth. I'm not saying that'll happen right now in NVIDIA. I have no right. idea because the real crazy question is when and from what level does it come yeah. back down to earth? But be careful when you see that. All right, Andy Swan, great information as always. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for bringing the like folio data to Fast Market. Have a great weekend, Andy. You too. All right, Joe, when you look at a name like NVIDIA, you know, this, like I said, there could be a day of reckoning, but it doesn't look like it's any day soon. The stock's up nine bucks today, Joe.